All right, so here is another verse that has to deal with the atonement and this idea that Jesus literally became sin or uh, took on the sins of the world and himself, which I'm saying is false. But let's look at this verse. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24 which says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So this is very much like a verse that I just read previously in Corinthians or Second Corinthians. Uh, let's see, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. But this says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, so Jesus bore our sins in his body on the tree. And so it seems to be that some people take this literally that, you know, somehow our sins were imputed to him or, you know, so, so in a sense he became guilty of our sins. Um, that's not the case. I'm going to look at Albert Barnes' notes again. So let's look at where he says, bear our sins. It says, there is an allusion here undoubtedly to Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4 and verse 12. See the meaning of the phrase, to bear sins fully considered in the notes in these places. As this cannot mean that Christ so took upon himself the sins of the people as to become a sinner. It must mean that he put himself in the place of sinners and bore that which those sins deserve, that is, that he endured his in his own person that which, if it had been afflicted on the sinner himself, would have been a proper expression of the divine displeasure against sin, or it would have been a proper punishment for sin. See notes on Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty one, which I already went through. I am curious about these verses in Isaiah. I haven't looked at these. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and verse 12. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Okay, so this is a verse that I kind of already went over as well. I'm not going to say a lot about that right now, but I'm just looking at it, and these are prophecies of Jesus and uh, the suffering servant, I guess. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 12 says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. I didn't go over this verse, but I should. But uh, again, it says he bare the sins of many. So you see these ideas where people or misinterpreting this and myself because I never really looked into this a lot deeper I didn't really consider these things but it seems to be kind of in plain sight here just with Albert Barnes and I'm sure some of the other commentaries as well which I'll look at them in the future but I seem to agree with him on this he was treated as if he had been a sinner in order that we might be treated as if we had not sinned that is as if we were righteous. There is no other way in which we can conceive that one bears the sins of another. They cannot be literally transferred to another. And all that can be meant is that he should take the consequences on himself and suffer as if he had committed the transgressions himself. And so, you know, he was treated as a sin offering. It's not like the sins of the world actually, you know, went into him or he took them on. Uh, and I think it's kind of important with the in his own body too, because who his own self bear our sins in his own body. So literally, you know, at the end, you know, there's already the bear, bear, bear bore our sins part, but then there's the added in his own body. And so people will, will want to take this literally even more and say that, well, see, it was in his body. He, he actually had those sins imputed to him. He actually became guilty of our sins. You know, no, Jesus was sinless. There is no guilt. There is no sin in Jesus whatsoever. 
who is God in the flesh. So this in his own body, this alludes undoubtedly to his sufferings. Uh, the sufferings which endured on the cross were such as if he had been guilty. Okay, though he wasn't. And so he was treated as he would have been if he had been a sinner. He was treated as a criminal, crucified as those most guilty were, endured the same kind of physical pain and all the, the, that the guilty who are punished for their own sins pass through mental sorrows strongly resembling as much as do the case admitted of what the guilty themselves experience when they are left to distressing anguish of mind and are abandoned of God. The sufferings of the Savior were in all respects made as nearly like the sufferings of the, as the sufferings of a perfectly innocent being could be. And so, just saying that, you know, God the Father didn't pour out his wrath on Jesus because Jesus became sin, or, you know, uh, so, this is figurative in the sense that he bore our sins, uh, that he was, uh, you know, as a sin offering for us. So, that's that. God bless.